discuss today Jenkins. Jenkins at scale with um, many aspects of it. So who are we? I'm Baptiste. I'm working for a cloud business now for some months now. I've been contributing to Jenkins for a few years since uh, 2009 or something and uh, at some before. And so um, I really am passionate about tooling in general and that kind of thing. So uh, generally I love automation. So that's it. If you want to contact me, the things are on the screen. And so I'm Michael. Um, I'm working at uh, a company called Open Alliance here in Toulouse. Um, it's a software company uh, providing some solution for airlines. Uh, and especially for fuel efficiency. Uh, and I'm in charge of automate uh, as much things as possible and um, doing some stuff with Jenkins. And so we've been working for on the software factory for a few years together. So that's also our experience if you are looking um, about that. So we're discussing, going to discuss that uh, the history of Jenkins very, very quickly because I think most of us of, and of you know about it already, but I think it's kind of good to try and uh, reconcile things. So very, very quick, short history. So if you know, don't know about it, uh, Jenkins started with a different name, which is which was Hudson, which was about around 2004 uh, in the garage of Kosuke Kawaguchi, and then it went kind of public for the first version on the 2005, and then um, in 2011, Oracle decided to fork the project, so the community went away and renamed the project, and a few months after it, the Hudson project was uh, given away, dumped to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and then in 2016, fast forward, as I said, uh, Jenkins 2 and many evolutions and so on and so forth. Those, we are going to discuss uh, many of those evolutions today. Um, the health and the state of the, the current state of the Jenkins community. So uh, I'm not going to describe every single statistics here. You will be able to do that on the internet, but I will just uh, I kind of discuss one, uh, two, two, I think. Uh, just an interesting stat. You could see if, uh, 150k installations worldwide. Uh, that's already cool, but actually you may not know, but last year it was 120k, so it, it took uh, 30k in a year. So even if for a project that is already 10 years old, you can see the, um, the augmentation and the number of installations is still um, Really, it's kind of kind of skyrocketing. Uh, interesting. Also, we can see that around the world, we have public statistics pushed. Uh, we have 13 millions of jobs. So it's interesting to know how many that, and we will discuss that a bit in a few, um, discussing also pipelines. Just a quick question, can a quick um, uh, poll in the room. How many of you are building? Uh, please raise your hand. Building everything on the master. Who has, okay, everything on master, so no agent. Okay, interesting. Uh, who has uh, one agent or two agents? Who has more than uh, five agents? Okay, interesting. 10 agents? 20 agents? Okay, great. Interesting. So basically, to sum up for everyone and for the recording, possibly, uh, we have mostly people who are around five or 10 and very few people have more than that so interesting so for uh, the first uh, thing we were discussing we are going to demo some very quick thing about mainly running things on the master so michael is michael is going to open uh, jenkins and run a jobs a job on it so yep. you can use the so um we have here um, a very simple Jenkins. Um, so this job is not on purpose, but we, uh, we are going to build a project with the basic um, with a basic uh, freestyle job. So I will uh, take this project and create a new freestyle job. Uh, at clinic. So uh, this um, project 
is a Maven project, and we have um, we have a build.sh in um, root, the root of the repository to build the project. So I will configure it here, and I will add um, a shell, a execute your shell with just this command. I will trigger the job. And here, my Jenkins has only one master with uh, four executors and no uh, agent. So the network is not working. It's working in with that, but hopefully it's going to well. work. So it's okay, I will trigger the, the, the job. Uh, it will run, uh, clone the uh, source on GitHub, and uh, it seems that Jenkins has a, a strange behavior, behavior in here. Um, he is missing some uh, images. So if you go to the, um, if you go to the, oh, sorry. <laughs> So we're going to show you something on the server side, uh, which is basically the explanation why you should not do that. Don't run things. I'm kind of unveiling what's coming next, but don't run things on the master, ever. Because um, if you see, uh, if you have a look at um, the project on GitHub, here, right, the build.sh uh, script, um, is like that, and someone has um, commented this line, which is um, unsetting the strict mode of the script, and he has added this line, which is basically uh, will override all the um, root rep the root directory of the machine uh, running on the master of my Jenkins. So basically, I have deleted all the data of my Jenkins, and um, so my Jenkins is already up because Jenkins had. Um, um, some things in memory, but I have lost all my data of my build. And this is just a kind of real life example. So we leave that for real for another situation, but pretty close. So that's also the reason why you don't want to run anything on the master because you could wipe out the whole instance for the whole company and the whole software developer. So you're going to lose a lot of time. So that's one of the things you don't want to do. Uh, so basically, you want to use at least one, and I would advise at least two agents if you want to avoid that kind of situation uh, and then trying to hope for a good uh, backup uh, for security and stability so yeah uh, that's it so maybe you want to discuss today actually we kind of back to the subject of the, the talk today why would you want to scale indeed so maybe you say okay i don't want to go very fast or very whatever it's for many reasons, but why interesting statistic about that is uh, you may see that, for instance, if I'm looking only at the kind of, you know, uh, let's say the monthly barrier, uh, in 2014 and 2015, you can see the, that already 53% and even in for 2015, which is, you know, kind of last century in terms of software development, already 80% of the company were developing and deploying more than at least um, at least one month, one time a month, and probably now it's far, far um, often, more often. So you don't today want to do kind of, you know, um, doing continuous integration in your company today is just the basics. If you're not doing it, you're probably should start doing that right away because you're going to be probably having a hard time with your uh, competitors and probably going to the next step, which would mean kind of the continuous delivery being able to deploy, to deliver quicker is kind of required for your, uh, uh, for that you could keep, keep on joy doing nice thing in your job and uh, don't run out of a job. So you need to go faster and to go faster, you need to, you know, be able to do things like spawn your tests among a lot of different things, different agents. So <clears throat> you want to do that progressively but you don't to do kind of try to spread the load and use as more as much resources you you want and it's probably even more i would say uh, important and feasible today because you know you have the cloud and very easy now to to scale out 
uh, or to do kind of hybrid uh, setups. So it's pretty easier, far more easier than, than for our, you know, uh, the old previous generation. Uh, you want to try and do dynamic agent provisioning because kind of have a follow-up, I will, I will, as I was just saying, it's very easy today to use external infrastructure and to automatically provision more agents if you need it. And probably you, you could also try and find some hybrid one. I mean, having some static one if you really need it. And then uh, when it's coming, you know, you're full, then going to grab some more resources outside to kind of be able to cope with the resources because what you want to do is really to kind of reduce the feedback loop, have your developers being happy because they are going to not to wait for two hours or two days uh, for a new agent. And also for reproducibility, you would just want to your build to be possibly still a bit slower, uh, but be reproducible. We've been living with Nikal in our previous lives, uh, spending, I don't know, almost days on things that would just be not happening on uh, throwable infrastructures. So really no brainer today, it's even more easier. So you want to involve and to evolve your infrastructure progressively using, you know, starting small, but still standing somewhere with, I would say, one or two agents, and then try and grow it to try and respect and, and provide, uh, try to not slow down your uh, development teams. And you want to do that progressively, you want to reach that kind of state a situation. Um, how to do that uh, mapping, how to move to that uh, grow, growing your uh, setup and how to build um, quicker and easier and, and you know, so the first thing you want, you want to do is kind of try to go to the uh, whiteboard and discuss with people and do some human things, discussing what you are, what you are, what you require in terms of delivery from commit to production. What do I need to do? Maybe this will trigger political discussions, trying to, I don't know, remove some teams, remove some blockers, remove some things. So it will be the first action. And then when you've done that, you will be able to implement it. It won't be very easy, but definitely that step is uh, more difficult and more time consuming than the technical implementation. Because when you are then trying to implement things, um, if, you are, if you're used to using Jenkins nowadays, who already had a look at pipeline just to have a look, okay, just in kind of the mid half of the room. Um, with freestyle, if you want to, as I was saying, try to spread the load to uh, hundreds of uh, test agents, or, you know, uh, do things like, um, do parallel builds, and let's say, imagine I have uh, 10,000 tests, and I would like to spread that to 100 of agents or 1,000 of agents to reduce the time it needs to build. Um, if you are doing that with freestyle builds, you may know that it's gonna be hard. And then, if I, had, if I had to the requirements that I want to fail fast, that means, let's say I spawned a thousand of agents and I want to every agent to automatically shut down, stop if one fails, then it's gonna be very, very hard with the whole way. So, add that, uh, the thing like human input, because if you want to do continuous delivery, go more, you know, grow your uh, way, the way you're developing and de deploying and de delivering software, then you are gonna need, you know, some human inputs. For instance, Netflix is very well known, uh, very well known company to um, deploying very often to production. It's, they are not the only one, by the way, but they are known to, you know, do continuous delivery. That means that someone has to, at some point, check the monitors, the monitoring, and check the statistics and so on and say, okay, let's deploy to production using calorie kind of testing or that kind of thing, but still, there is human interaction. Doing that, with, again, doing that with freestyle is just kind of impossible. Um, and I'm not talking about robustness. What happens if the Jenkins server or your agents are dying, crashing in the middle of the two, two days build? Uh, you're kind of, uh, it's kind of an issue. So freestyle was, Kind of easy to do simple things, but it was pretty impossible to do really complexly. So that's why that's what led to designing a very new system, which is so pipeline and a bit later uh, something that would make easier uh, to visualize things. So now we are going to present you uh, the the thing that went out of that, 
which are so Jenkins pipeline and a pretty closely related project, which is called Blue Ocean. So we will begin with uh, some statistics. So um, there is uh, uh, this uh, diagram uh, show the adoption of um, Jenkins Pipeline and Blue Ocean since one year. So it's a very uh, rapid growth. Um, we'll begin with Jenkins Pipeline. So um, Jenkins Pipeline is a set of plugins provide, providing a, a kind of DSL and uh, some uh, tools around it uh, to uh, implement continuous delivery pipeline or, uh, in, uh, for your, um, your company. You have two ways to uh, describe the, uh, your pipeline. So you have the scripted one. It's uh, the, um, the, the original. Um, it's a more imperative or programmatic way to describe your uh, pipeline. And uh, it's more uh, mature. And the second one is a declarative way. Uh, it's um, more opinionated, opinionated uh, way to declare your pipeline. And it's younger. Um, the, uh, 1.0 um, was released six months ago. Jenkins Pipeline provides also um, some uh, different way to uh, store your pipeline. You have uh, the most basic way is to store your pipeline inside your job configuration. So you have a new job type called pipeline um, instead of the freestyle or other type of jobs and you have the most common way is to store your pipeline inside a Jenkins file uh, which is stored inside your code repository. Uh, so uh, and this pipeline is uh, following the same life cycle of your project. Now Blue Ocean is the uh, kind of rethink of the uh, user experience provided by Jenkins and it uh, is very uh, simple to use and very uh, uh, adaptive to the new way you can declare your pipeline, especially because it's very integrated, well integrated with pipeline. We will have a look of, at uh, the uh, Jenkins pipeline and uh, Blue Ocean right now. So I have a Jenkins here. No, no, this one is not working. This one is not working too. Oh, this one. So uh, this is a um, Jenkins instance uh, configured with the D Digital Ocean plugin. Um, and thanks to uh, Digital Ocean uh, sponsorship, we have a um, little number of agents here. Um, and we will go to the uh, Blue Ocean UI. So Blue Ocean is a plugin. So you can install uh, it. Um, uh, right now if you want and use it without um, without any trouble and it's actually um, it's 1.0 so it's not definitely considered totally feature complete but it's really definitely production ready so you can install it it won't crash your instance uh, we will uh, create some job using um, github here I will regenerate a token yeah okay um, so Jenkins pipeline, when you don't have any uh, pipeline yet, um, propose us to create a new one. So you can target a, a specific Git repository or a, a GitHub account. We will choose this one. Uh, we'll, we will then um, add to our my personal um, GitHub API token. And then you will uh, list all my uh, organization. Um, I will choose this one. And then you have two ways to create your pipeline. You, you can create a new pipeline from uh, scratch or uh, you can auto-discover uh, all Jenkins files of all your branch, your branches of all your repositories inside uh, the target organization. So we will do this one and then create the pipeline. So at this point, Blue Ocean will and Jenkins will um, uh, fetch all the um, uh, repository and find uh, all Jenkins files on the roots of the repository and create jobs associated. So in this organization, I have a project named Spring Pet, Cl Pet Clinic, and I have one branches, branch uh, called Pipelinization, Pipelinization containing the Jenkins file. I have also some other um, branches, but 
only this one has a Jenkins file. And um, it is uh, currently tri triggering the pipeline associated. So we will have a look um, at the pipeline right now. The pipeline of this project is, um, is uh, like that. So um, we, are all, we, we are here in, here in the uh, declarative way to declare your pipeline. So you will begin by, it's beginning by pipeline step. And then we, um, the main things is uh, you declare all your stages um, here. So, so we have a first step called build, which uh, we will build our application with Maven. Um, and then on this stage, after the build success, we can um, stash things. Um, it's the same meaning as, as git, so you can uh, get some uh, source file or binary keep them and reuse them later uh, in your pipeline. So here um, I stash all the file of my uh, project, including the compiled, uh, the compiled sources, and I'm excluding all the, uh, the, uh, the jar file. And I name this stash compile, and another uh, stash here is for binary, or, and I just want to keep uh, binary build by Maven here uh, on this uh, stash. Then I have um, another stage called test with uh, parallel uh, steps. And here Jenkins will um, uh, give us the ability to uh, distribute completely the test associated with, with our project. So here it's a very simple example since we are um, uh, testing only unit, unit test, but you can do the same thing with uh, some integration test or acceptance test as you want. So here we have one, two, three, four um, tests in parallel, and for each uh, for each uh, task we are allocating a new node. So a node is a, an executor on a, a specific with a specific label, and we are um, unstashing the compiled source of our project and triggering a Maven build uh, with only. Uh, sorry, a Maven with only test of uh, associated uh, module. And after that, we have a staging stash, um, staging, staging stage, sorry, um, which uh, basically unstash bi only binary, not source code, only binary. And I just um, do um, display them for, to, to show you that uh, the jar are correctly retrieved here. Then we have a manual approval. So Jenkins will stop and say, okay, um, uh, does it look like okay for you in the staging environment? And uh, do we want to um, continue to production? And if here we uh, say, yes, it will continue. And in the, in the other, um, and if, you say, if we say no, um, it will not end over the bridge. So here my pipeline is now looking uh, like that. So we have the table, the, the stage is te test, and the four uh, tasks running in parallel. Each task has been, um, has been allocating a new machine in, inside my cluster of digital version. And then the manual approval, if you click on here, Um, Jenkins uh, asks us if you want to abort or proceed this one. So we will abort it for, uh, because we will change something. Here we want to add a new test here. So we have the ability with the visual editor of BlueOcean to add uh, more visually and not uh, programmatically or uh, uh, with your hand, uh, the, um, the new model. So you can here see all the um, visually the step steps um, run by each task. So we want to add a new one. We will call it that because the, the module we want to add is called that. And if you have a look at other, the first step is allocating. Then we want to unstash things and build uh, something with Maven. So we will add an allocation of a new node 
with label test. Then we want to restore uh, some things, which are the compile. Yeah. Then we will run a Maven, Maven environment, which is Maven 3. And in type, inside that, we want to trigger a shell script pro, um, running the test associated with this model. So we will trigger a shell script here and just um, target the, the good model. And when I want to save, um, it will uh, link uh, this pipeline directly with GitHub so, since we have added our um, API token. So add that model. And I will create a new branch here uh, called add that model. Oh. And if I save now, um, Jenkins will Yeah, Jenkins has pushed the new branch with the new pipeline, and we can see that here, the pipeline is now containing the correct, uh, the new task inside the parallel. And if we add a look here, it has automatically created a new job of my branch and uh, triggered, the, triggered the job. If you have the look here, we don't uh, really see that um, Jenkins is, is doing things in parallel, but if you uh, go to the old UI, for the standard UI, the more classical UI, um, if the network wants to, Um, sorry, we all... Uh, Zemo effect. Yeah. Network is not working very well, so... The beginning went pretty smoothly, but... <laughs> so, uh, here Jenkins is uh, really <laughs> um, triggering my job and doing things in parallel, but... Um, We're connecting through my phone, so maybe this is why. Um, Okay, so it should have built, so it's pretty similar anyway to what we were working previously, so we are going to move forward. Um, so uh, it was, should have been just building the new branch and so on, so something is wrong with the network or something, so anyway. Um, so just a thing about pipeline, um, how it works internally. Pipeline is a special beast. It's very robust because if you kill the master, it's going to restart from where it, from where it left. How it works for doing that? Uh, it's actually kind of serializing its instruction, sending them to the right agent, and keeping and um, pulling them back to the master, and probably doing the same over and over. So basically, this is kind of doing serialization each time. So there are a lot of security re, um, settings which are out of the box, which is called the, the, the sandbox, which is isolating your pipeline to run on the master to not do wrong things, like, I don't know, for instance, new file, blah, 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 and remove something. And it's really, really easy to screw up if you're going out of the sandbox. This is why there is a sandbox, so don't run outside the sandbox, because if you don't, you could really, really easily wipe out your old Jenkins home master. This is actually what I was referring to earlier. This is what we did. Someone wiped out the 100 gigabytes of data on the master doing something wrong because we were, so this was before we enabled snapshot, uh, sandbox in general, so that's why. Um, so we enabled sandbox for the same reason previously. 
And so we're going to wrap up and try to have some time for a few questions, hopefully. Um, so to kind of summarize, you really need to go faster. I think today there's no reason anymore to uh, reduce the number of resources you assign to your Jenkins and your build cluster in general. Uh, this is the, the trend. I mean, uh, you're going to have issues with regard to your the market. Your competitors are going to go faster than you. Your developers are going to be pissed off. For instance, I remember some uh, years ago, two years ago or something, uh, we had a um, discussion at the coffee machine and some colleague said uh, how, how pissed, pissed off I would be if I had to work uh, in another company where we had to file tickets and so on to have agents. So this is many aspects of it, but this is an important one because you know software is eating the world. It's very easy to find a job today in software development. So also, if you want to keep um, good profiles and people who are interested in that job, this is another aspect of it. Um, you need to throw away your agents to make sure you are not relying on snowflakes, right? You don't want to your agents to be you know progressively. You don't know there's a what's called in the configuration as code word. It's called configuration drift. You don't want to things um, evolve in a way you don't know anymore what's on the on, on something. And the best way to do that is to throw it away and reinstall it from scratch. Then this way you're sure you are not going drift to drifting for like I don't know one year and then cross your fingers and never throw it away anymore, ever. Uh, use labels. Don't use node machines, machine nodes. Uh, machine names, I mean, uh, because for kind of the same reason previously, you want to throw them away. So better investigate, uh, invest on something like something that, that has a Java agent or Java um, v VM instead of something that is called Java dash zero one, right? Um, try to keep things simple. It's pretty in, in, in interesting. Uh, in some months from now, one of the Jenkins core contributors and the pipeline creator uh, will have a talk at Jenkins World uh, about using Jenkins less. Uh, it seems weird, but don't overcomplicate things. If it's to run a one-liner, you don't need a plugin. Just use a shell script and run it from Jenkins. Jenkins is really, really great to kind of orchestrate your build, but you don't want to uh, try and do everything using plugin, Jenkins plugin and so on. And that's it. Uh, start simple. Don't forget to, you know, uh, Remember John Gall, you may know not that guy, but that guy had done a very nice thing, which is about systems in general. Uh, if you want to design a, system, a complex system that works, you need, you are required to start simple, and then it will evolve progressively to a complex one. And the corollary is, if you start directly designing a complex system, you will have to trash, trash it away, to throw it away, <laughs> and to restart from scratch. So um, iterate and evolve it progressively. Thank you very much. And um, if you have any questions, we are happy to answer. Any question? Great. Thank you. <laughs>